Greetings validators and welcome to this video guide about staking v4. I am Raul, I'm representing the DevRel team from Multiverse X and together we will dive into what staking v4 means specifically for validators and we will explain a few of the new mechanism introduced. We will go through a little bit about uh, let's say uh, node qualification threshold, auction list, what is the waiting list, what happens at epoch start, we will explain automatic node qualification and go through two examples where we will simulate two staking providers and the situations they, they could find themselves in. Also, uh, we will suggest some strategies there. We will have a, a brief a slide for a wrap up and a way for you guys to contact us in case you have questions or you need some more details about staking before. Let's start with node qualification threshold. We will call it NQT from now on because it's going to be easier to go through this video without repeating node qualification threshold too many times. I have uh, posted a, a picture from our explorer and I highlighted this number, which is 3,352 EGLD. Uh, this is our node qualification threshold. So it's important to remember that NQT is a number. How do we calculate this NQT? Uh, LQT is calculated dynamically by the network approximately every 10 minutes. It is influenced by the number of nodes uh, leaving or joining the network and the overall EGLD stake. It is very simple to calculate. Uh, it is basically a sum, uh, an average of uh, the node base stake and the redistributed top up per node. Let's see, how will we uh, calculate that? So uh, in this example, uh, we are taking a virtual staking provider which has 40,000 EGLD stake and running 10 validator nodes. So out of all of this stake, 25,000 EGLD is the base stake required to, to run all these validator nodes and 15,000 EGLD is actually the top up from delegators. So in our case, let's call it the staking provider NQT for this certain example would be 4,000 EGLD. We calculate that by dividing the overall uh, amount of EGLD stake, which in our case is 40,000, divided by the number of uh, nodes, and it gives us 4,000. This is how it's calculated in, uh, in uh, practice, so it's very easy to understand. Let's continue with the auction list. Auction list has been introduced in staking v4, and I want to show you a brief uh, picture from the explorer, just to explain a bit the stages uh, that, that are uh, displayed here. So in the first section on the top, uh, we see the nodes that have been qualified in the auction list. Of course, there's a lot of green. In the middle, we see nodes that are in danger uh, of, uh, they are still qualified, but they are in the danger zone, how we call it. Danger zone means that their NQT is still uh, enabling uh, them to qualify the nodes but at the same time, it's very close to the network NQT. And as this is a dynamic number that changes, uh, if that increases, then these nodes in the future uh, shuffle will not or are in danger of not being qualified. And on the bottom of the page, you can see all these red numbers. And basically, th this is a list representing nodes that haven't been qualified, which have an NQT lower than the network average. So. You can see there, uh, there's a list just below the 3,352 EGLT. So those are nodes that will not qualify. Let's spend a bit uh, more time with uh, the auction list and what it actually is. One of our esteemed colleagues, uh, our core developers, uh, explained it in a very easy way. Uh, he said that uh, the auction list basically is a bucket of 320 nodes. This uh, means 80 nodes from each shard, randomly select selected every epoch start, and these nodes remain in the auction list for one epoch. Now let's, let's understand why the auction list. The auction list, first of all, was devised with security in mind. So nodes that are shuffled off from shards, is, uh, is, this uh, mechanism is uh, random and is being done each epoch. This ensures no colluding and gives uh, all staking providers a fair chance at uh, validating and it gives us a healthy shuffle of shards and nodes. Let's talk about the waiting list. What is the waiting list? So basically it represents the nodes that have been qualified from the auction list, list we just, which we just talked about. This means that all the nodes from the auction list that had a, 
an AQT equal or greater than the average network AQT are qualified. Then they go into this waiting room, from which they will join the consensus, but only after four epochs. That is roughly four days. Um, so these nodes from the waiting list will join the consensus regardless what happens in those four waiting epochs, even if AQT has changed. Once qualified and in the waiting list, nodes will validate after four epochs. Uh, one remark that I have here is that staking providers with nodes that remain unqualified for multiple consecutive epochs will uh, have their uh, APR decreased because they will have less nodes validating. So something uh, to keep in mind for uh, our staking providers. Okay, let's continue with epoch start. Uh, there are a few key things happening at epoch start. So we will just go briefly through them. I think it's important for everyone to understand uh, what happens at epoch start. So let's briefly explore a new configuration is, is read from a meta chain, right? From the epoch minus one. And then 322 randomly selected nodes are shuffled out from the consensus and moved to the auction list. You see everything uh, connects. Everything is connected. This adds jailed and living nodes. So what does this mean? For example, if we have three jail nodes and three living nodes, when the selection has happened, the total of the of the auction list will be 326 instead of 320 because the nodes uh, that have are living or are jailed, we have to compensate for those. So we have to add more. So nodes that are not qualified will be left out of the consensus. Let's continue with talking about automatic node qualification and what does it mean? Uh, let's see how this happens first. So this is a mechanism that automatically redistributes a staking provider's total top-up amount to the validated nodes they own. So the system focuses on redistributing the top-up according to the NQT so that as many nodes as possible from each staking provider are qualified. This is a starting point. This is a calculation and uh, the mechanism is designed to show each staking provider how to adjust their top-up per node or the number of nodes that are validating. Uh, after this initial step, each staking provider must manually adjust according to the node qualification threshold of the network, the NQT. Next, we will explore a few examples of staking providers, uh, NQT, and possible scenarios to expect. We will call this the staking provider one, and uh, let's let's uh, explore the the conditions we are simulating. As you can see, this staking provider has sixty six nodes uh, with two hundred and thirty thousand EGLD stake. Easily, we can calculate what their potential for staking provider NQT is, which which we can do fast, and we can just divide the amount of EGLD stake by the number of nodes. And in this case, we get 3,484.84 uh, EGLD, which means if we isolate the top-up alone per node, we will get to 984.84 top-up per node. Pretty easy. Now, the network parameters for this example, NQT, is set at 3,542, which easily we can calculate and see that it means 1,042 EGLD top-up needed per validator node. So from our previous calculations, we observed that our staking provider, the staking provider one, is missing 57.16 uh, top-up per node. So uh, this means that if they will have any nodes in the auction list, they will not qualify. So let's continue the scenario. As you can see, the staking provider one gets 12 nodes shuffled in the auction list and the system automatically calculates that eight nodes qualify and four nodes do not qualify. So the staking provider will be running actually 62 nodes out of 66. The calculation steps or this are exemplified as follows. The total amount of top up di divided by the total amount of nodes and if the result is lower than the network NQT then the system automatically does a minus one node step until it reaches equal or greater uh, than NQT. In our case, it needed four steps to reach it. This means that the staking provider will be able to run 62 nodes with the current network conditions. So you can see 
the calculation being done on the bottom left side, step by step. This is how it happens. This is how you, the system decides uh, how a staking provider uh, will run how many nodes. Let's get to the conclusions part with this example. Uh, our staking provider one with automatic calculation gets four nodes that are not qualified. What does this mean? This means that 10,000 EGLD are locked unproductively and they will run less nodes because each node costs 2,500 EGLD to run. Having four nodes out will mean 10,000 EGLD locked. Now we have two strategies we are exploring in this example. There could be more and we are actually eager to see the community maybe bring some more. But here are two of the, the obvious strategies for us. One strategy the staking provider one can apply is to get more top up for the nodes in order to reach the network NQT. This is logical, right? It can, it's the first thing that comes to mind. In this case, we have they need to qualify to 3,442 uh, EGLD as a top up. And uh, of course, it, it, will, uh, it will ensure their participation. Uh, so if they will have uh, nodes in the auction list and they, they, get, uh, they get this uh, extra top up, then they are guaranteed to, to be qualified. But again, this strategy uh, brings them to the network uh, quali uh, node qualifying threshold. So the network uh, calculated amount. And this is a bit in the danger zone because if this increases, then they will again be in the danger of having uh, less nodes qualified. And now let's continue with the second strategy. The second strategy, which may be uh, a bit less obvious, would be to unstake four nodes. So they will now have 10,000 EGLT and use these as a top up for the remaining 62 nodes. This will bring the staking provider one top up per node to 3,709, which get, gets them to uh, about 167 NQT margin. So they are above the node qualifying threshold uh, calculated by the network. And we consider this a healthy position to be in. We will now continue with staking provider two. It's a, another example uh, similar to the previous one, but with different conditions. Staking provider number two, as you can see, have 25 nodes and 80,000 EGLD. We can easily calculate what their staking provider NQT is, uh, and that, that gives us 3,200, which means 700 top up per node. Now, the network parameters for this example are the same as in the previous one. NQT is set as 3,542, uh, 3, which means 1,042 top up needed per validator. So from our calculations, we observe that our staking provider two is missing 342 top up per node. So uh, we continue the scenario. Staking provider number two gets 10 nodes shuffled in the auction list. The system automatically calculates that one node qualifies and nine nodes do not qualify. So this staking provider will be running 16 nodes out of 25. That's pretty drastic. So the calculations uh, steps for this are exemplified uh, in, uh, in the slide. So you can see that uh, the total amount of top up divided by the total amount of nodes. And if the result is lower than the NQT, then the system does an automatically minus one node step, and then it calculates again until it reaches equal or greater uh, to the NQT. In our case, uh, for the staking provider, it needs nine steps to reach it. I didn't post all of them because uh, it's just a wall of text that is uh, useless uh, just to post it here. So you can see it starts with uh, 17,500 divided by 25, it gives it 700. So then it continues minus one, 24, and uh, so, so on until it reaches 16. Because 17,500, which is the top up uh, this staking provider has, divided by 16 nodes, gives us 1,093, which is larger than, uh, greater than 1,042, which they need for, uh, for qualifying. So then, then it gives, gives this a success, but still the staking provider will be running 16 nodes out of 25. Let's, uh, let's draw some conclusions here. So our staking provider number two, with automatic calculation, will get nine nodes not qualified, but these nine nodes means 
that they have 22,500 GLD locked unproductively and run less knobs. Now, let's go through the strategies, the two strategies that we explored in the previous example. One strategy the staking provider too can apply is to get more top up for their nodes in order to reach NQT, which in our case is 3532. So, in order to do that, this staking provider needs 8550 EGLD top up. This can easily be acquired from delegators or from their own funds, and then they will qualify to exactly the NQT, which is 3000. 542. In this, this is a good case, but at the same time, it just puts them in the danger zone. Uh, so perhaps they either would have more top up or try to explore a different strategy. Our second strategy would be to again unstake some nodes, in this case, four. And that means 10,000 EGLD that they can use as top up for the remaining 21 nodes. Doing this is actually giving them a better position and it will increase the top up per node that they have to 3,809, as you can see from the calculations. This puts them at a very healthy NQT margin of 267 EGLT above the NQT of the network. So this is a this is a, a more interesting strategy because if you don't have top up or the staking provider cannot get, let's say, 10,000 EGLD in top up in in a week or a few days, then they could explore the strategy of unstaking some nodes. Okay, that's almost a wrap up. So we have gone through uh, explaining a few of the new concepts in staking before. Node qualification threshold or NQT, again, is dynamic. This is a number and it's calculated automatically every 10 minutes. Staking providers should be vigilant to, the what, to what the NQT is and what is their node status and adjust accordingly. If, if it's more top-up or on-staking nodes, actions are required to maximize the number of validator nodes that are part of the consensus for a staking provider. So we wish you happy staking. Of course, you can contact us on Telegram. Uh, you scan this QR code just to, to join our validators, uh, public validators group. We, we are always there answering your questions. You can also join our Discord this is another place where you can get support, you can uh, contact uh, other people and maybe meet with uh, more developers. Thank you very much.